All right, you guys, today we are here with the owner, the boss lady, the CEO of Trip IV. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Thanks this has actually me. been a, a long time coming. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, when we first met, we partnered with you in West Covina. We partnered with you in Chino Hills. We've seen you grow to Long Beach and now to your storefront. But before we get there, kind of how did it, how did the drip IV thing even start? Because you're a nurse, right? You yeah. have, you have to be a nurse, yeah. to do it, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, you you don't have to be a nurse to open a company, you True. know. And so, but it just worked out that yeah, that I've been one for ten years now. So it's been a while, but it kind of just like it was in the midst of COVID started. Um, we were having friends like jokingly tell me to get ivs and i'm like how am i gonna walk out of a hospital you know and it was just kind of like a joke at first and then um it was like one thing led to another we have um fabian has a friend who owns a med spa and so he's like hey let's chat about it like you know we met with him and then he kind of broke everything down which is like super gracious of him and then it just kind of trickle down like okay well this can't be so hard so we just kind of started it and then it was just me doing it by myself i'm like okay let me see kind of how this will go and then at two and a half three months later i was like i need help and then it kind of just took off from there wow so you got you guys started during covid we started during COVID. So many success stories. So many, I love that. So many success yeah. stories. You were, in a hospital. You, you were working. You had a job. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I, I actually still do. So I do You're nurse still? case management for Loma Linda. Yeah. For the ER. Mm -hmm. I'm contracted through IEH, or not IEHP, sorry, through um, Optum Healthcare, which is a huge insurance company. Um, and I do nurse case management for them. Okay. Yeah. So I still do that. Oh, I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Oh, so you're double dipping, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's smart. Yeah. yeah. I had the job pay for. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it's you, the smartest way you to know, do it. Sometimes in like entrepreneurship, some people don't understand. Like, if you have a, a nine to five or whatever it is, that will supplement the business you're trying to start yeah. and then you know and then once that gets started then you you make the decision if you want to quit that yeah if you don't but I, but i know a lot of people are nurses because you actually have to have a love for it right totally. but there's so much more that goes into oh, nursing yeah. i think a lot of girls like i want to do it but i'm like mm -hmm. you gotta change diapers you got yeah, there's you no know, glamour there's a, in no nurse. there's no glam it is a very emotionally Re rewarding and draining draining yeah. job yeah and especially during covid i was having companies like call me to work for them to help because you know people were getting sick or the nurse was exposed so she couldn't be in work for two weeks I mean, what was it like a 10 day before yeah. um isolation that you if you got even if you got exposed you couldn't be oh so i God. had so many people like reaching out to me can you do this can you work for that and then i remember literally coming home because i have the kids too like coming home and like Undre like don't oh touch me oh my god me. i remember that you remember how crazy yeah. that was leave like, all your clothes in the life. garage yes yes, yes. our shoes like outside like, dude it was so bad so my wife would, uh, would undress in the garage literally gosh. yes I, I remember how ridiculous like angie and i were we'd get a pot and we put all this like boiled onions like got all this stuff what? that people say okay. and you would steam your face in it so like if you were just outside it was killing all the bacteria that because they were tr trying to say covid was like in your nose or yeah. something yeah. stupid so you would uh, let the steam just like kill yeah. Every time I learned something new. So how stupid I'd be. We're just like in this pot of steam water with like garlic and onions. Video footage about it. Just like burning the shit out of our nose. Yeah. Ridiculous. You know why I'm laughing at that? Spraying each other with Lysol. And my hair never grew back in my nose. My wife does that when my daughter gets sick. She cuts onions and puts them in a room. I'm like, what the fuck is that smell? Oh my God. We do that with the baby. Oh my God. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. We did it with the baby. So if your baby gets sick, like she'll cut it off. So you're downstairs, cut up onions onions and you know yes and it smells you I'm like boil fuck? it you can boil it you know, like, she cuts raw onions yeah put, puts them in a sock and okay. then you put them yes. in the corner of the baby's room yes wait in a sock in a corner a yes. it, yeah you and put it it's so crazy because tristan had rsv and his wasn't like a severe thing because remember that happened too I remember yeah that, my yeah, nephew uh -huh. had it back yes, had oxygen yes. Yeah. well he didn't have it like to that extent but we i did, I was Googling everything and I did the onion thing where I just cut it up. I put it by my nightstand. I put it in his room and it's so crazy because the onion literally like shriveled and yeah. was like 
it was just weird it was yeah. so crazy but it worked no, I, I think it absolutely worked. I don't know. no science behind it no it, it just works not. just tiktok said yeah. <laughs> tiktok, TikTok said oh my that was my google we'd be like oh no we did the steam when oh it's shit up <laughs> like it's killing whatever's in there yeah yeah That's so crazy. so so kind of going back to like for people that have never heard of drip iv what exactly is it what services do you offer mm -hmm. Um, is it for and, and for me I always thought of like an IV as for like the elitist you know because mm -hmm. when IVs first came out it was like I, I want to say I remember it in Vegas yeah, yeah. Vegas, totally. so Vegas, over Vegas kind of made it famous for like oh totally over, over. Vegas, so, I think. so for me when until I met you being introduced into IV I'm like man how, how much is a service what do they offer is it something I could afford something yeah. for me so mm -hmm. kind of tell everybody like what what it is exactly drip IV is so drip IV is vitamin IV hydration and we offer um, vitamin injections as well um, and we have like a wide range of cocktails is what we call them for different people you know wanting different or trying to you know um uh, what's the word achieve different things so for instance like somebody who needs a detox like um, we have glutathione IVs and those are really good for like a detox it actually detoxifies your liver um, and then obviously your liver is like a huge factor and you know your face your and gut health take that too well before they drink too, right? yes there's pill helpful. forms of yeah. them a, a lot of these vitamins that we carry there are pill forms That's of them like it's 100% absorption in the IV. You're right. getting 100% absorption of that vitamin. Um, and so, yeah, we have different, like the glutathione. We have a beauty bag that has biotin collagen in it, so it helps with hair, skin, that and nails. One's, that, one's, yeah. that one's real popular in West Covina. Yes. Um, also, the Myers cocktail is like, everyone wants the Myers cocktail. It's like it, our golden standard bag. So oh, it has, What is that? Um, it has magnesium, calcium, B-complex, vitamin C, okay. glutathione. It, and we've had clients come to us that, you know, suffer, suffer from lupus and their doctors tell them like, hey, go find a vitamin IV company and get the Myers cocktail. And it helps with their body aches, with the wow. fatigue. Wow. And they're like, it's life changing for us. So we have, you know, clients that, you know have degenerative diseases or people that just need like i'm really bad at drinking water can i come get an iv and that makes such a difference like drinking and hydrating yourself like the fatigue from that the Definitely. you know your skin feels different everything feels different um so we have like everybody that it's just not a hangover yeah, I mean, even when i was pregnant i went to you guys i would get yes. one probably every other month and just i just didn't want to feel bad so yeah. i was like okay what can i do to just make sure like my pregnancy is smooth mm -hmm. and yeah i felt like it helped and me i too. thought that my entire pregnancy um we had a client i serviced her her entire pregnancy because she was like sick her the entire time wow. and so like they're they're good for you they're they're you know it, it helps and um we have a range of clients it's just so crazy and to be honest like we don't really service that many people that are hung over yeah i mean that's just, like i mean not, not the stigma but i think yeah. that's what people first think of and that's the reason why i, I wanted you on here because there's so much value that you guys offer yeah other than hydration and b12 yeah. shots and stuff mm -hmm. but i think it's just the education part a lot the of people don't, don't don't know yeah and honestly the more that i go into it i'm realizing that like we'll have people call us and they're like but what is that and i'm like oh my gosh there's so many people that aren't yeah. educated on it mm -hmm. and it's just like there's do you there's so many different benefits to different vitamins and and getting the hundred percent absorption because you're getting it in the IV, that is the game changer. Right, right. Because people don't understand it's a hundred percent absorption. Right. So like everybody takes vitamins or you mm -hmm. should be taking vitamins no matter if you're younger or older but i know people will go they'll go to cvs and buy a vitamin c whatever yes. it is it's yeah it's, 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 it, it's the stigma right. right it's the stigma of like okay it's going to be through an iv like can i afford that is that something i should be doing mm -hmm. but really it's like uh from the clientele i've seen at west covina they're on a regular schedule mm -hmm. they come in they get yes. the beauty bag they get their their, their collagen and all that stuff in there yeah. that you would yeah. normally buy but you're wasting money and cents if you're buying cheap quality vitamins because you're not getting full absorption yep. where with right. you if you get an IV you feel it instantly mm -hmm. yeah. it's not something that oh, I gotta you take this for six months you'll feel like once yeah. you get an IV you yes. feel that instantly you feel it instant mm -hmm. yeah we had a client yesterday and he hasn't been feeling good and he like texts me in the evening he's like it's so crazy I already feel better yeah and I'm like yep because exactly. you're actually absorbing the vitamins yeah. and, and then you're also lacking. too with the pill by the time you actually take it and it absorbs into your body goes where it needs to be then you're also taking the capsule then that's you know what i mean so that. that capsule doesn't even break down no because of what it's made of, so it has to be yeah. a certain type of capsule exactly that 
you know, and it opens a, up yeah. Into your piano. Mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a game changer. And like I said, we service a wide range of people. So it's really nice to be able to like, to do that for people, you know, it's not yeah. like you're just going over and carrying a hangover. Like you're really giving these people quality of life and it's just a great feeling. Yeah. But if you want, and you're listening to this and you do have a hangover, I think, I think too, it's very important to kind of bring up, cause again, these are for people that don't know anything about your business. Mm-hmm. If you're getting an IV, a shot, these are all nurses, right? That Correct. you outsource. So kind of explain who, yes. who's, who's administering this. Yeah, so they're all licensed, experienced nurses. Um, obviously, they're verified and we check, <laughs> so they're legit. Um, but they are nurses and they are educated in the field. So um, we typically like our nurses to have experience. So a lot of our nurses come from backgrounds of med surge, ER, um, uh, hospice care, like literally everybody, all of our nurses have different experience and we have like a group chat and where we're able to go back and forth with each other and kind of educate everybody. Because, I mean, I don't know a lot of things that one of the other nurses know and so we're able to kind of like bounce off like hey what do you guys think about this client what do you recommend here what do you guys think i should do um so it's really it's like a really cool community that we've kind of built because we're all able to educate each other yeah so yeah all of the nurses are licensed all have (laughs) experience they're all legit (laughs) um and so yeah they're 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 awesome and all of them are oh my gosh i love them all so much yeah no you have have a great team team, but i I say that because i had um i had a a client ask oh do the trainers are the trainers doing this for you yeah (laughs) right after your session that same trainer is going to go give you an idea yeah you know but you know what too a lot of people don't know what it is and i think that's i think getting this out to the masses and and now you're becoming more popular there's more businesses similar to to what you do totally. i mean everywhere everywhere right everywhere what, what would you say is the biggest difference between something that that you service compared to like another company that may be like down the street um honestly i think our like the staff has is professional they're sweet they're outgoing they're comforting too because we do concierge services so we're in people's homes too and i think that that's like the biggest um like difference is that like we make you feel comfortable in your own home right you know what i mean like a stranger is coming into your home giving you an iv but like i like i like to hire these nurses not to to be like me but they resemble me so they're like you know they'll make you feel comfortable and i think that's kind of like the key like everyone says oh my gosh your girls were so nice they're so sweet they made me feel so comfortable like i'm scared of needles but she like literally didn't even hurt me and it's like stuff like that yes. it makes such a difference and and you know if you're going to one subway or you know you're like oh that subway is disgusting um and they're all the same subways right right everywhere but you go to one subway is disgusting the other subway is so nice and staff is friendly and like that's what Definitely, i feel yeah. is like the difference between that you that, know yeah. us <laughs> yeah that is huge because i think the number one thing i hear from potential clients is like i'm so afraid to get a shot i'm yeah. afraid to get a needle and if anyone's ever had their blood drawn you know that every nurse does it differently yeah i'm, yes. I'm, I'm terrified of needles so, yes so for me <laughs> yeah. when, I, when i get an iv they love that like main and it's vein. very rare he gets an iv okay yeah, it's very rare. <laughs> he's I have on to, his deathbed and he won't an IV. An IV. i'm like jason let me just give you she like, tried to give you a free one yeah no, uh, she's no. like, just on the house i'm like no no dude. he wouldn't and yeah, i'm like I'm okay get rot in bed yeah and your veins are like <laughs> yeah. probably i'm that. terrified yeah. too like i have friends after yeah. every time they go out and they'll have like you know vegas or wherever and they have a room they'll always have a nurse come over yeah. and they'll get IVs, and i'm like all right well you guys have fun like yeah. i never did it and then i had that first time and i had anxiety like, oh yeah oh, i give you your yeah. idea yeah. thank you honey hey, we all actually have that on video yeah. i literally could I not even and it's not that it was bad so i heard you it just, just the thought of having that yeah it gave me anxiety it's like okay but covered in tattoos yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like dragging on your skin. I the same way. Like, yeah. it gives me excitement. No, I mean, obviously, yeah. I've used needles before, but um, for um, bodybuilding shows and stuff like that, but it's just different to just sit there and see. I don't like, know. look at but, it. But your staff does do a really good job of, like, making someone. I, I've been, you know, I kind of eavesdrop when they're doing their consultations, and um, it's... Y- 100% I always hear people go, oh, it's already in. That's what I hear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're already done? Especially yeah. with the shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, a mother and I daughter went in there and she was like breathing and she goes, just take a deep breath and look over there. And then she goes, okay, all done. She goes, you did it already? And she's like, yeah, well, you were taking your deep breath. And she's like, oh, I didn't even realize it. So mm-hmm. having the staff and the knowledge of actually doing mm-hmm. shots and IVs does help. Because yeah. if you have a novice that's trying to 
find your vein or, mm -hmm. or, or poke at that, it could be a very horrible experience. Yeah, and we uh -huh. honestly, like we make drip, it is, um, like my operations manager, she does a really good job at making sure that like our team efforts um, are there. So we do a lot of team bonding. We have quarterly meetings where we make it fun. We make it about content, but like, okay, this is serious for 10 minutes. Okay, let's have some fun. So like that team bonding and like the comfortableness in the company is completely there. And I think that that's a huge factor is that like, you know, a lot of these, you know, nurses in a sense, they do go 12 hour shifts 10 hour shifts yeah. and they're hustling the entire time that you know they're in corporate companies and they essentially don't not that they don't care about them but it's different no, it's like, oh, here it's when a, you work for a small yeah. business and it's like okay they do care about my input or they feel like they can vocalize like hey this isn't working for me can we do this or can we get a different equipment because this kind of isn't working like we hear them out mm -hmm. and i think that that's important like where their break from their nursing their full-time nursing job and like that's important to me because i did that like i know what it feels like so keeping that culture is like a hundred percent you know we talk to each other with respect we're always supporting each other if you know one nurse can't you know she's having our time with an iv another nurse is there to support mm -hmm. her we have that in drip and that's really important to me not only that the number one thing i hear from your nurses is um obviously nurses make good money being a nurse but also being a nurse under you they they make pretty oh my they gosh good, yeah. girls i'm not gonna bank. say a number <laughs> but um i've talked to one nurse and she was she does it three times a week and she was telling me i, I make a good amount of money oh so so God. like if there's a nurse out here listening that that's probably interested in working for you where they just like message you directly yep yeah, so um we do request a resume um so they can message us they can text our work line um and we'll kind of scan their resume and then i also have a lead nurse who's amazing and she kind of filters out the resumes um and then yeah we can if we have a position available you know and and it fluctuates obviously you know you know some days are some months we're not busy some we totally are so right. but as long as we have the resume on file we can those are the ones we pull first and, so. and, and do you provide them with the pink scrubs or is that them yes I do. Is that, is that like the like, like the, the welcome package? The first yeah. Question. Yeah. Are you okay wearing pink? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yes, we do. So I provide all of the equipment for them, um, full supply of everything, all the vitamins, and then their first pair of embroidered scrubs. Anything else, then that's under them. Um, but I do provide that. No, for I them. love that. I love that. It's like welcome to the family. Yeah. Here's, here's, yes. here's, pink scrubs, yeah. here's uh -huh. your pink scrubs. And, and yeah. stands out. You got the pink couch. You got the pink sign. You got yeah. the pink scrubs. And it's, can it's you a, tell pink's my favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little sprinkle of me. <laughs> so, so you've been doing this business for what is it? Three years now? About Almost three years. Almost three years. Two and, and a half. And you and I have a lot of conversations outside of of the gym and and everything. Everything. And we talk a lot about business. And yeah. What we get a lot of is people are like, "Oh, that looks so easy to do. <laughs> I would love to start that." W what would you say was the hardest part of starting a business? Starting your drip IV business. Um, honestly, I think building the clientele and continuing to build the clientele. Um, and it's like just word of mouth, to mm -hmm. be honest, like now that we're a little bit more established, obviously we have, you know, tools to continue the marketing. Um, but that for those first, no, almost the first year building that clientele was, is probably the hardest is for people to like, trust you, like you're going in and doing in a sense medical term is like a medical procedure technically but you're you know trust getting people to trust mm -hmm. you to do that um and i think like just that in general was probably like the toughest thing and you know i i know a lot of people fabian knows a lot of people so it was nice that we have those people that can say good things about us that yeah, can refer definitely. us um but i for sure think that that's and is still probably the toughest thing it's because i have that's something that i have to build or do every single day every is i have to market day. and yep. i have to know that i'm representing something and mm -hmm. every single day i have to do that because now there's people that depend on me yeah that these are people's jobs you know i have a few girls who do this essentially full time and it's like I can't let them down, yeah. you know, so yeah, every definitely. day I have to work at that. And it's like, it it was the hardest thing, but it still continues to, to be hard. You know what I mean? Especially like, because 
I, these are a luxury as well. It is. It is. It's like a self care thing. If you go get your hair done, your mm-hmm. nails done, or you know, whatever, it is a luxury. It totally is. And you know what? To be honest with you, and this is obviously I'm in the fitness industry. I don't feel like it's luxury. I feel like it's more of an asset. Like getting your hair done is a luxury. Getting your nails done, mm. but focusing on your health, it's not like you're. You know, it's not like you're getting mm-hmm. hydration. It, I mean, it's, I, it's I, essential, but people can look at it as like they don't need. They'll take you know, getting yeah. the, paying that extra money to go get that drip is technically a lot. It would be considered more. Like, yeah go get collagen and you know like yeah that I is. Have, right. it's it's for us 150 dollars right. like yeah. yeah you know what i mean you can see it totally both ways yeah, and a lot sure. of people are like this is my way of being healthy mm-hmm. so i'm spending 300 dollars this month on health yeah yeah um, so you totally can see it and you know or if some people come to us like well like all me and my girlfriends like we want to do it. we have like a girls weekend like then it becomes like you know okay it is like that's the luxury side of it and then there's people who are like you know actually need it for my health and this is how much i have for my health so yeah. it's like yeah. it totally goes yeah. both ways 100 I mean, percent. depending think, on your lifestyle yeah totally yeah. i feel like covid really opened up a lot of people's eyes to to the oh effects of being healthy oh, yeah. for sure so i mean like again i'm in the fitness industry so i look at it as like i know people were like scrambling to get ivs like hey i want zinc because i think they, they shed zinc and magnesium and all that stuff really does help yes. it. and so everybody was trying to get them because oh you gosh, need yeah. you needed it so the people that are listening like i feel like that what you offer yes it could fall under being like something that's like you don't really need but if you really think about your health and if you ever have to if if you've ever been either sick with sick at all and you know what it feels like to like not be able to get out of bed you should put that as as number one in your priority because all the money you make all the things you do you cannot do unless you're healthy right like none of that matters Mm. nothing matters unless you're healthy and Mm. i think people put that on the back burner until something happens yeah yeah you they know? take that so, for granted until so they're i would love to change the narrative of that i know what you're saying it's a luxury in a sense it is because do i eat or do i get a, a iv right and and so some people see that, it like that yeah. you know and that's yeah. the thing obviously for us it's different because we are in, in the in fitness industry. industry so health is important to us but on an everyday like an everyday person you know that's not it's yeah they'll just take a vitamin and that's, yeah that's definitely mm-hmm. yeah, yeah but, both ways so as you're as you're working and you're doing at home calls, when did you know it was time for you to scale the business and like and like expand out? Because you were doing at home first, mm-hmm. then you you know you partnered with us, and now you're partnering with a bunch of other gyms, and now you have your own brick and mortar. So like, when did you know it was time for you to scale? Um, so you know, obviously, like I said, I in the beginning it was just me doing the IVs, and um, you know, I was essentially running the company, doing the IVs, taking on the clients as well. I had my personal number out in the public; it's probably <laughs> still somewhere there. Um, but I was everywhere like and you know I have three kids well now I have three kids back then I had two but um, I was literally dropping the kids off at school going to do IVs in like Rancho and then I would go to Anaheim and then I would come back and grab the kids and then I would drop them off at home hey mom can you watch the kids so I can go do an IV go back to LA like I was everywhere wow. everywhere all in one day and that's kind of how I started building up my clientele and Fabian was like, you need help. And I'm like, well, what, how do, what does it look like to have an employee? Do do I have them sign something? Do I do, you know what I mean? I had no idea. So then I had to learn that. And so then that's when I kind of started, you know, getting more of my, my girls on board too. And then we were getting a lot of calls because people aren't necessarily in the space to have that have us in their home. And, um, we were getting calls like, well, don't you have a spot? And I'm like, no <laughs> like i'm just starting like you know what i mean and so w- once i started getting like three four calls i'm like shoot i probably should yeah. look into getting somewhere my clientele was high in la so i i don't know if you guys know this or not but i actually had a studio in beverly hills i did not know i did that. not know <laughs> yeah. that no yeah so i opened up a studio and and it was like in um like a solo salon like you know how they rent okay, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. so it was like that so it was perfect the rent was you know super cheap but that's where our clientele was was in the la area so i i was in there and then afterwards i was like um we started getting people out here. Would you have somewhere for us to go? Because, you know, well, we don't want a home visit. And, you you know, you have to respect that yeah, for whatever sure. reason they didn't want to. So it was just kind of listening to our clients and our clientele. And, like, if it was, like, one call, it's like, okay, you know, 
it's business yeah. it's gonna happen but it was like multiple people you know over and over again asking to come in or do you have availability shoot no because my la nurse is booked i have the kids i can't go so it's like shoot i need another nurse here or i need another location because now over in ie we're getting crazy because everyone's you know hearing about it so it's just kind of like listening to that yeah um but also not putting like all my eggs in a basket either because i still technically am a small business yeah. right. so it's like do i run myself dry just hoping that these people call me so it was like <laughs> something that i had to like okay we have you know enough money to be essentially in a new spot or i have enough you know money to supply a nurse with all of her supplies so then i can hire somebody else so it was mm -hmm. kind of like it was like a slow kind of work up but definitely listening to our clients and was uh, well is probably the biggest um biggest part in me expanding right. continuing to expand and it's always a learning curve it's always a learning yeah. process you and i have had that discussion i mean on top of juggling the fact that you're trying to expand your business you're taking care of your employees you're taking care of your home then you have your own personal things that you that you obviously have to deal with whether that be like hey i gotta take my kids to soccer i gotta do this and um that's always the biggest thing i try to get across to people that want to open a business is like it's not you don't clock out yeah. There's never a time that you can just clock out and be like, oh, well, it's five o'clock. I'm not working anymore. At any time, there could be an issue. There could be something yeah. coming up. You try to spread yourself thin. I mean, now I think you've done a good job of managing it all because you have, you know, the location. So the, the brick and mortar that you open in, in, in down, yeah. kind of tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So I actually had um, somebody approach me. Um, they had a building that was open and he was like, do you want to, you know, come check it out? And I'm told Fabe, I'm like, oh my god i don't know like can i do this like you know and i was so i still am nervous i mean it's going great but i you know there's so much that i had to learn in in having an actual storefront right. like i've never done that yeah. um so i met with him and and he was like you know if this was an iv place how would you do it and i was like well i would knock down this wall i would do this i would do that and he's like well let's do it and i'm like um okay <sighs> you know it was just kind of like i i don't know i just kind of trust in my my gut right. and so yeah and so i opened it up with you know essentially them and they helped you know rebuild it and and kind of make it into what it is um and they also kind of reassured me because you know i'm my family's from whittier and that location is in downey mm -hmm. um, and they're from downey and so they know the area very very well and so they're like you know there's no iv places here in downey and i'm like really they're like yeah they ha know a lot of people that go to la to get their ivs and they're like it would be popping like you know to have it in here and i'm like okay you know and and they're amazing people they're very trustworthy and all that good stuff so it's like you know you just feel the vibe yeah, yeah um, definitely. so they're great people and so i'm like okay let's do it so and you know i tell them you know over and over again, i'm like guys just be patient with me like i've never done this before yeah. and and he has you know restaurants and other things going on for him too and and so i'm like just help me learn you know because i don't know what the heck i'm doing here so that kind of was how that developed and we are so busy at our downy location yeah you guys love that busy. oh my yeah so it like if they told me that you know which they essentially did but i was just kind of like okay like just kind of trusting my gut yeah. but i would have like the way that it is now i would have never even thought of that two months ago yeah, but yeah. ultimately those people sought out you because they they see you as a business owner and not yeah. oh you do ivs like anybody can do ivs right they trusted you because of your vision and like you what you've already established mm -hmm. with your reputation yeah so that shows a lot on you and your character for sure I, yeah i know that's that was like the scary thing too because when we met it was like i don't know them and they don't know me but they see drip mm -hmm. you know and so it was like at that point it was like okay like you know drip essentially is me you know i'm the walking billboard yeah yeah <laughs> i'm the uh -huh. face Definitely. of drip you're, you're the face of it on IG. yeah with, yeah with starting your business obviously you're saying you're still learning it's still learning experience what are some of the biggest like obstacles that you have gone through when opening your business and is there anything that you would have changed from the beginning um I definitely, I feel like, oh my gosh, there's so many obstacles. <laughs> like every yeah. single day. I just go through our text yeah. chat that we right. have with each other. <laughs> I'm like every single day. But again, day. I think it goes back to what Jason said, like, oh, that's all they do. Like, it's probably easy. Like, we would think that, right? But obviously, it's clearly not. not. Yeah. You go through so much. So, like, what are some of the... Honestly, I feel like, you know, going back to, like, upscaling, um, 
when essentially you're you know you're a small business and you start it it's your baby right. and I think for me to like I, I, I was not over like bearing but like trusting other people with my company that has been the biggest thing because you know i do need help so i have my assistant and she's been with me this entire time for two and a half years um i just hired an operations manager um actually it's been a year since she's been with us and then having a lead nurse and i hired the lead nurse when i had my baby a year ago because fabian's like how are you gonna do it like you're gonna literally she came on right before i had tristan because i'm like i was going to all the locations every single yeah, week. We like, saw you. I was I like, remember. with my boxes walking in. Hey guys, just like, when are you going to yeah. stop coming in? You're yeah. like, oh, today, today's yeah, the last yeah. day. Today's the last day. Hours later. Yeah, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> so I think like trusting other people has been like, do you love Drip as much as me? <laughs> They're never going to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Definitely. that's really hard for me. That's yeah. re- It is really, and to this day, it's really hard for me. Like, are you talking to people the way that I would talk to them? Like, you know what I mean? That's been really really challenging for me is um you know and i want drip to be bigger and you know essentially to have for more people to have hands on you know the concept of it um so i think letting that go a little bit um is j- definitely been definitely been challenging that is yeah. so hard, especially because that's your baby but yeah i mean uh, even like i've been like uh, um when i first opened self-made i i went to mercy because i know we talk the same she treats people really well and then you know i hired ricky as the lead trainer and it wasn't again i had two other people in that position before i was like okay i need someone that's kind of like me but not like yeah. me because they got to do their own thing yeah, i, I don't want to duplicate me but it's it is because i built that brand you know mm-hmm. so it's like now you're giving the keys to somebody and you're <laughs> like hey don't fuck it up <laughs> no, literally yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I, I think what really helps you guys scale and continue to scale is obviously your leadership and your willingness to ask for help. Yeah. Your willingness to be like, hey, I don't know it all. And that's the number one thing I tell people. I do not know it all, but I'll do everything I can to find out or, or help you out. Um, pride is a motherfucker. So sometimes people be so prideful, yeah, they'll never so ask for help. Yeah. And then you don't know about it till it's already too late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for you, just me outside looking in, I mean, I've seen you scale, but really I've seen the culture of your of your company really build from where it was Definitely. to what you helped build in West Covina to Long, Long Beach. You just opened up over there and yeah. the culture there is awesome. Oh God, I you love know? it there. Yeah. And, then, and then Downey was like, it's a huge risk. I remember you were showing me like the build out and you're like, Jason, I don't know what I'm doing, like in the You're sense of the like, business part. I, I was like, what am I looking at? Lines? Yeah, like, yeah. Measure, what is that measure? Yeah. That's when you have a business partner. It's yes. Essentially yeah. like an investor or just a business partner? Um, both. Both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think it's a good, um, I mean, I well, from what I've seen of your partner on Instagram, it looks like it's a great, partnership. great partnership. Oh, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Crystal is amazing. She's like, She's basically like me. I was yeah, saying, it, looks like, it looks so, like she's your sister. Oh, I totally. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, literally. Yeah. She's literally she yeah. your sister. Yeah, I thought it was. I'm we're like, oh. the same age. We're like the same vibe. Like she's she's awesome. She's really yeah. <laughs> we're definitely click. I totally and she. I love her because she's very business. Um, mindset like mm-hmm. very motivated self-motivated yeah. she's um she has so many things going on she's opening up a drip cycle in whittier drip cycle it's called drip cycle it's a cycle um like a like a bike yes like a soul cycle yes oh, okay. kind of like that but it's called and drip then you're getting cycle. a drip at the same time no, 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 so, oh, no, she's had this in the works for a long and time, and it goes hanging, I guess, it's yes, like, yeah, yeah, like, that's it's great, so hers is drip with one P, but it's drip cycle, and it just coincidentally, that makes perfect sense, yeah, yeah. that we are both, like, she's like, drip and drip cycle, like, this is perfect, oh, you know, it was okay. total coincidence, but she's, she's opening up that soon, too, so she's, she has tons of things going on, nice. um, you know, our other partner has tons of things going on and they're very like business minded they know a lot of people they're very very educated in the business world I so mean, like their restaurants are i'm not gonna i mean yes yeah their restaurants are do yeah. very well I, yes. I guarantee if you're listening to this you've eaten at their restaurant before. yeah and it's yeah. like you want to associate with with those type of people yeah, who definitely. know like you yeah. know that's because they're I gonna wanna, teach you as well they're gonna mm-hmm. teach me too and like you know i'm just getting comfortable enough to being like guys like what are you talking about <laughs> like you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. you have to help me you know See, and, and even that conversation that we that we just had right now it's like you're like i don't know it all mm-hmm 
on the outside you have it you do have a successful a successful business but it's like how could i scale and be better mm -hmm. a lot of people don't have that mindset of like let me ask someone that's been there and let me ask someone that knows more than me yep. i mean that's what we always like i don't know at all you know i need someone that's better than but me we'll find to, but we'll find someone yeah, you know and i never ever want to come off like that you know even when i talk to the girls about some things too and i'm like like if i make one decision and i change it i'm very vocal about why i changed it mm -hmm. and why it does work and why it doesn't work and it's like you know we're just i'm still learning i'm still trying to like you yeah. know navigate through this and i hope that i never come off that i know everything because i 100 percent do and i don't and i don't <laughs> ever well do i know yes. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> marriage i got married yeah. Yeah. i do okay. <laughs> sure. um, but i you know i never want to be the smartest person in the room mm -hmm. and if yeah. i am then i'm in the wrong room exactly 100 yeah. percent. No. yeah definitely but, agree with that so you have how you have three kids three kids married wow, three kids. Bus business owner just scaled um you also i saw in your stories you, you were going through some some health some health issues right yes i had no clue you were going through any health issues and you and i were like racking each other's brain about business and i'm like oh i just thought she was tired because of the fact that she's opening yes. the downy one yeah so kind of take me take everybody in this time frame from when you were opening downy transitioning to long beach like what you were dealing with health wise yeah so um definitely bear with me i've never talked about this actually um it was very private very as private. you guys yeah. know um just because i i didn't know how to navigate it and um up until you know last week is kind of when i've been able to kind of marinate in it so um right before um tristan my son's first birthday um i actually had a miscarriage at 12 weeks mm. yeah sorry guys oh my god try not to cry no, okay. okay um it was hard because we th we were throwing his first birthday and um we planned to tell everybody then so we had it planned out. We were gonna, you know, have his, you know, make his cake smashing, all that stuff, and then you know, clean him all up. And then once he comes out, um, have him, thank you, have him in a onesie. Mm. And so, you know, we had it all planned out. So we went in for my 12 week um, appointment, and um, the baby is, and I, I just knew, and it was hard because I had, we had just gone to my eight week, and I like, I saw the baby. There was a heartbeat. It was, formed and everything we saw it and so going into my 12 week i was like what the heck happened mm -hmm. so that was this has actually been um my second miscarriage so um i you know you think that it gets easier and it it definitely wasn't it it was not it was definitely very very hard um so because of where i was at in my pregnancy um i ended up having to go into surgery so i went in and had a dnc that night that was my first surgery. Um, so we, you know, we had Tristan's birthday. Nobody knew. Um, you put on a face. I oh put on God. a face. Was yeah, totally fine. Took pictures, everything. And it was so crazy because my sisters actually flew in from North Dakota. And they were like, they wouldn't let me do anything. Obviously, I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. lift. I couldn't do literally anything. And so every, like my friends came over. Everybody helped me for his birthday, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. Um so then I had, you know, that happened. And then two weeks later, I went into the doctor and, you know, as a post-op, you know, checkup. And they told me basically that my uterus was still as if I was pregnant. I'm like, what does that mean? You know, like, I don't understand. So they ended up giving me um, basically like an abortion pill. And so they're like, let's see if this helps shrink your uterus back and so i was down for a weekend oh my god yeah i couldn't do anything and it was like basically i was giving myself contractions so i went a week later for that follow-up the pill didn't work so they gave me another set of a, like a different brand if you would um of like an abortion pill and that one i was down for a weekend i couldn't do anything i couldn't lift tristan i couldn't be at my kids games nothing i couldn't do anything so i was literally down for another weekend went back it didn't work and i was like well, i don't understand what's happening so that's when my lab started mm -hmm. and so um i was doing like weekly labs and when i got my lab result back the first time my hcg which is my pregnancy hormone was showing as if i was eight weeks pregnant 
and this was a month after surgery oh my god yeah so the doctor was like um you know something more is going on your uterus isn't shrinking we're not sure why but we don't want to send you into another surgery because when i had tristan i hemorrhaged and then in my first surgery i started bleeding out so i was in the surgery room essentially longer than what i was supposed to during my dnc um so they had to you know bring down ultrasound put some special gel inside whatever because i was bleeding too much so they were trying to avoid another surgery because they're like well we, we don't know if you know you're you're gonna bleed out again like it could be a bigger problem you can hemorrhage and when, when you hemorrhage you essentially could die yeah. so um um so she was like keep getting your labs let's see if they go down so i was getting weekly labs done and we had another follow-up so the doctor at this point the entire hospital and all the doctors were basically coming together and hurtling and um trying to understand what was going on with me so they came and they re-looked at my pathology from my original surgery and it showed that i had a partial molar pregnancy so basically, what, yeah, what is that a partial molar pregnancy is when um, basically two sperm fertilize one egg and the extra chromosomes go off on their own and attach to their uterus. Oh, okay. it attaches to your uterus and there's different procedures and ways to handle that and it's very rare it's like say, yeah. is is it's this? not it's very very rare it's like one in like 15 thousand people or something crazy yeah. it's very very rare to have well the scary thing about that is that those extra chromosomes that attach to your uterus um, become a tumor and that tumor becomes cancerous and it travels to other parts of your body so when i went to that appointment they're like you have to start chemo yeah and it was like really hard because it was just like all in 10 minutes oh my god it was all in 10 minutes and it was like i was just looking at fabian and tristan was right there too and i was like wait what chemo like what do you guys mean so and it was the only way to shrink the tumor so they started me on chemo and um i didn't have to get it like in the iv it was an injection um but it it hurt like my entire leg went numb and i was like i have to sit down so we were like in the you know room essentially for a little bit and then after that i um like i had this disgusting taste in my mouth like it was like a chalky taste my body just started hurting like it was just like like i told Fabian, i'm like i even feel bad about complaining because there's people who get the real crap in their vein. Yeah. Like, yeah. if I feel like this off of a, sh you know, shots of chemo, like I can't imagine what they're feeling, you know. So I got the shot on a Tuesday. That na the next day, I was totally fine. I'm like, okay, I feel okay, you know, no big deal. Um, and all of a sudden, my stomach was just like hurting. Like it was like nothing, like worse than labor. Like I've never experienced anything like that before. And essentially, those are side effects of it. And um, so I was home. I was in a ball, and it was like to the point where I call my mom. Like I was that scared because I'm like, this can't be normal, mom. Like something's not right. I don't feel good. Um, and I like stood up from the couch, and there was blood everywhere. Oh my yes. God. So he started hemorrhaging. That's what I thought. And so I called Fabian screaming because I had the baby. It was just me and the baby. And he rushed home and we called my doctor. They're like, you need to go to the hospital now. So we, my girlfriend lives literally down the street. She rushed over, grabbed Tristan. We left and um, we went to the hospital. I was admitted and um, there was basically, you know, labs and ultrasounds and everything that was done was um, basically fi we figured out that there was extra pregnancy still in my body that wasn't taken out. And that's because of the partial molar. It was because it wasn't done right. And so, but they didn't know that. Yeah. And so I ended up having to go into a second surgery oh, and I was in the hospital God. for two days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after that surgery, um, you know, I was down again um, and um, I was continuing to be monitored with the chemo and then um, my labs, that's why I had to do weekly labs is because they wanted to make sure that my hormones were going down. And so now we're probably three and a half months post my original surgery, I think 
two six weeks post my second surgery and um my levels last week finally came back at zero nice so i don't have to do chemo anymore um i have to be monitored for six weeks just to make sure that the tumor doesn't grow Mm -hmm. um my scans came back normal it didn't travel anywhere um so yeah i I got that doc my doctor called me and he was like uh hi vanessa i'm like hi dr grace everything okay and he's like it's perfect you're perfect and i'm like what what do you mean (laughs) he's like your levels are finally at a zero and that's when i received your text yeah it's it's so funny uh i messaged her and because you know you've been in my mind for a while like i've known i don't know this is the first time i've heard it so Mm -hmm. this is the first time i've heard what exactly your medical condition was i just know that um you were still running the fucking business you were still responding to text messages dms i mean i was like hey this or that and you were still running a business the whole time this was going on i had no fucking clue mm-hmm. so now i feel like the biggest asshole but um uh, <laughs> you know uh, you always been in my mind because i've been wanting to have you on the podcast i just know you've been busy so i was like hey you know what we haven't had vanessa i want her on and then she's like oh my god it's so funny that you messaged me because that same time is when you got the news from your doctor mm-hmm. which is great and you know it's crazy and and e- even coming into this you guys um I didn't know the extent of, of what you went through. So for me, it's not like I, I'm trying to put you on the spot. You know, we had a conversation before because I feel I feel like the point of podcast is to inspire people. And not only are you an awesome business owner, awesome mom, because I've seen you with your kids, mm-hmm. awesome wife. Um, a lot of people go through what you've been. I mean, except for the, uh, was it the mole? The partial molar. Yeah, partial molar. <laughs> yeah. But, but for but the most part, for miscarriages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of those things that is common but not talked a lot yeah, about i feel like it's taboo and, to talk about and, and i i hate that it is because mm-hmm. it's not and, and you know some women feel like oh it's my fault maybe i should have done this maybe i shouldn't do that but you're a nurse you, you mean you can speak on it uh, uh, most of those happen for unexpected reasons right mm-hmm. most of that stuff is out of your control yeah it is and and that's the that's what i had told the doctor that day when i found out that i miscarried i was like why does this keep happening to me like what am i doing like you know i have three healthy kids like i can have kids i know that i can but like why is this happening and she's like you know there's nothing that we can do to to know why like Mm -hmm. you know why it happens it's just something that happens And and it runs in my family um i have family members and um my mom you know it's it's common in my family um but it definitely doesn't um get any easier and i I went through that that path too because for the last three and a half months i've been like just on fight or flight mode like you know i haven't been able to soak any of this in i i haven't been able to be like yeah like i lost a baby you know i haven't been able to be there so it's been like very very hard Mm -hmm. and my sister told me the same thing she's like Vanessa why don't you talk about it and as much as it doesn't seem but I'm like a very very private person yeah no you definitely are I'm a very private person and I think for the just the sole fact of is like I don't want anybody to treat me differently like I didn't Mm want to tell people that I was on chemo because I'm like I'm not dying I'm fine like okay you know what I mean but I didn't want people to treat me differently and I didn't want people to feel bad for me I like I just don't I don't know. It's just you're like, like I can handle it. I can do it. it. I can do it. Yeah, and it just got to the point, you know, when you know I was on my couch and I was bleeding. Fabian was like looking at me, and he was like, "I can't see you like this anymore." Yeah, like he's yeah. like, "Please just yeah. call." Like I can't, and like him seeing me and then not being able to do anything like hurt him too. Oh yeah, you know. So it was like it was a lot for a lot of us, you know. And so that's kind of when I started slowly posting about it you know i didn't say what i said right now Mm -hmm. um but i had people i'm like i just need people to pray for me like because i'm scared you know and i've never been scared for my life you know you start thinking about like your kids you know what's gonna happen to you and it just scares you yeah and um there's a big difference between telling people because you want attention you want people to feel sorry for you yeah and what you're doing now is and i agree i feel like sometimes you hold all of us i mean and i'm just going to group it into like an entrepreneur but obviously you've gone through a lot more than most but there's sometimes like you need that outlet just just to kind of share you know and to be honest with you there's probably people listening to this that are like man i've been through the same thing Mm -hmm. or i'm going through that and and like you said it never is going to ever get easier it never should I mean, you know, there's a lot more that goes into that than than I've never carried a baby, but I know from, you know, my wife having there's like a bond and stuff like that mm-hmm. that you'll never lose. But what amazes me is the fact that like you were able to manage every I mean as best as you can. Yeah. Right. And I think that's the part that people don't really understand is like as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a mom, as a wife, 
like you can't call any of those days off no you can't be like you know what because of this you still had your son's first birthday mm -hmm. yeah you mm -hmm. still did what you had to do that mindset is is insane but obviously i think this release and like letting people know your story yeah and i know you you're not doing this for people to dm you it's more of like it's getting off your chest and sharing because mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a it's a wild story, Vanessa. Yeah. yeah. You know, from the high to the low to where you're at now, you know, and you're still real, you're still young. So you yeah. don't have any, you know, you're right. still young. I'm pretty sure your doctor yeah, told you that. They so, did. like, everything came back normal. Yeah. He was like, on paper, you're like, everyone would want your health. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you're, there's nothing wrong with you. And so I think that was like the reassuring, you know, part mm -hmm. of it all. But, you know, with like the company and and having to navigate it and all that other stuff it was like like i didn't start drip because i essentially wanted to make a million dollars and you know what i mean like it that's not why i started it i started it because i didn't want to be in a hospital and miss my kids games or yep. not be able to pick them up or them mm -hmm. be in daycare all day that's why i started drip because i know what it's like and so like for me like drip during all of this was my peace outlet and i tell the girls all the time i was like y you guys are like you don't understand like you guys thank me but like i deserve like you guys deserve all the praise because you guys keep this company going but essentially like i need you guys more than you need me mm -hmm. and i'm like i don't i like sound like a broken record because i'm like from the bottom of my heart like thank you guys so much but truly like from the bottom of my heart like if i didn't have drip like and there's been waves of you know like a depression in a sense because i i couldn't work out i couldn't go out when i was on chemo i couldn't drink i couldn't be in the sun i couldn't do anything yeah. literally um for the last three months and so like this gave me like a sense of like purpose yeah. you know what i mean so um it like drip in the meantime of it all it was like i couldn't like it gave me purpose but it gave me peace and like i truly needed drip in these last months so like that was like not a distraction i would say but it was like i don't know it's like it kept me going you it know also, it was like you like you just said it's 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 a purpose like your purpose was to and, and you know i talk to you often on text your, your whole thing is always like about your team you're always like i want to make sure my girls are taken care of i want to make sure this so for you it's like you know you have people relying on you so the purpose is there right what mm -hmm. you started was there uh the business thriving that's all there so it kind of gave you again a sense of purpose of like okay i'm gonna not take your mind off of it but i have something to do because i have a lot of people that rely on me mm -hmm. but at the same time you do have to take care of yourself first what we For go sure. back to yeah. And, yeah. and that's why i'm kind of glad you took some time off and and still the still didn't victimize yourself yeah still, still running yeah. things man yeah. you know and it's so crazy because i actually was actively getting ivs during my chemo I did the Myers cocktail and I did a D3 injection because my bones hurt. It hurt. My body hurt so bad. My knees hurt. My calves would be really tight. There was days I couldn't walk. Um, it hurt really bad. And so I was getting those IVs and it made me feel so much better. Wow. Fabian's like, don't stop doing the IVs because it made a huge difference. And I like literally have this disgusting drug in my body yeah you know i was like i just wanted to like flush out like yeah. just get out you know and so the ivs truly saved me like energy wise my body everything and so i would have the girls come over and they would give me ivs when i would get the chemo wow yeah i mean i remember when i got when you sent me that text i was like there's it would, you just sent that and i was like enough said like you know you, I, I don't i didn't know the extent of it i didn't want to yeah. push it i want to be cheese muscle like hey what's going on yeah. i didn't call fabian it was more of like i knew you were i knew you were dealing with something and that, that, that's what you said you said i just need all the prayers i can get so i was like okay and i said. and i feel bad too because you know when i did post that i was in the hospital there was so many people and it you know with good intentions that reached out to me and i hope that you're okay you know what's going on like some of my family doesn't even know the extent of it yeah. wow. and um i i didn't necessarily respond because um there was so much happening that i didn't know how to respond yeah. and it wasn't that i was like ignoring anybody or anything it was just like i i can't i don't even know where to start you know like it's just so much and i need to process it all and there's still 
so oh, yeah. many messages and stuff that I still haven't opened because I'm still processing it. Like I literally am like, it's been, no, tomorrow will be a week, no, today's a week since the doctor called me. And I'm like, I just, <laughs> Fabe was like, are you going to talk about it today? And I'm like, I think so. I think it's time. And I was like, Oh, wait, I t forgot to tell my sisters. <laughs> I was like, I probably should call my sisters because I haven't told anybody yeah. that my levels are back at zero. Yeah. Literally yeah. nobody. Nobody yeah. knew. I was like, after I got off the phone call, I like, it even took me a while to call Fabe because I was like, what the hell? What is you just, you just wanted to sit on it on yourself. I just wanted just to like it, yeah. sit on it, literally. And so I was like, Fabe's like, well, you should probably call your family, but that's if we're gonna put it on a podcast. Yeah. I was like, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, for us, for, for, for you to feel comfortable enough to yeah, come on definitely. here and, and trust us with your story, like, you know, you, you know, we love you. you yeah, know, yeah. You've, I've known your husband for a long time. You know, I met you through Marissa. And so for, for us, when I when you sent me that, I, I text Marissa right away. I'm like, let's just make sure we're there for her in any way we can be because I mean, I haven't been nearly where you're at, but I know when I'm going through stuff, I just, I don't need people to ask questions. I just need you to be there for me. Yeah, yeah. that's how I And so that, that's where I kind of took it with you. It's like, you just need someone there for you. Mm -hmm. And so I would try to try to text you bi-weekly or just, mm -hmm. hey, how you doing? You know, I was yeah, thinking of you, you stuff yeah. like that, because I, I knew now that I know the whole story, it's like, wow, yeah. you're, you're an amazing person mm -hmm. to be able to handle it all. Obviously you had Fabian helping you. You had great business associates. You have great, I guess you call them employees, but mm -hmm. you know, people that work with you. Yeah. And it does take a village. I actually never called him my place. <laughs> Did you? No, yeah. I, I just say I always say my girls. You're, I don't know. You're, you're, you do. I do. I you're always girls. say well, my girls. You had your girls. You had a lot of people supporting you. And, and I think now you sharing this on such a a, a bigger platform is going to help some people that are probably, probably going through or maybe they've been through and they don't know how to really process it yeah and it just shows like you might think you have everything together like you know people see me you're successful you have the family you have three ba beautiful babies mm -hmm. like you have the man like outside in it's like oh she's got it like mm -hmm. there's nothing gonna like tear this girl down and a good looking man shout out to fabian he's over six feet tall what's no. it six three six four six four <laughs> she's six this four. isn't about fabian not a flex <laughs> <laughs> oh god he's gonna love that <laughs> shout out fabian he's like he's gonna like, repost yeah. Yeah, 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 like, like we need that <laughs> 10 second clip your, Can dad, you your husband is good looking and he's six four i'm gonna clip that and send that to him <laughs> Oh God. oh God! But even with the man, yeah. no. But you still have it together. So I think it helps other women who are trying to juggle it all. Mm -hmm. No, like, damn, it's okay to have a fucking bad streak. It's not. Sometimes it's not just a bad day. It's mm -hmm. a bad streak. It's months, and you're still showing up because mm -hmm. you have all these other people that depend on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's like your drive. It's your motivation as well. But mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that's an amazing. And I think too that like a lot of people view me that way. Mm -hmm. It's like that I have it all together. I, I mean, yeah, I, I do. I yeah. did. A I mean, lot of people, I mean, no. sure. But Even yeah. from like high school, like people, you know that you know i interact with them on social media or if i run into them or whatever the case was like for whatever reason that's kind of what i've been like like oh she has it all together yeah. no but and we would I, walk into the gym together and we'd look at each other like today's yeah, a bad day yeah. you know <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, like, like seven mm. minutes the feel <laughs> and then we're like all right you're gonna get it done i'm gonna get it done yeah. like all right bye girl don't know yeah. the last time my hair was washed seven <laughs> ten days six days who knows <laughs> I don't, I don't know when the hair was washed but yeah. I got that IV in me but I did brush my teeth this morning okay <laughs> that's what we'll show for enough. sure yeah. 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 yeah no that's fine I mean if any I mean I know people and that's why I say Instagram you guys is a highlight reel highlight it's reel. literally a highlight reel uh it's same shit people message me from high school from whatever oh that's so awesome i'm like i don't got everything figured out mm -hmm. i'm still learning i'm still Thank growing God. even at my age i'm still trying to figure out what exactly is like the holy grail where, where am i ending up you yeah. know mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the fact that you take a couple steps back and you realize you do have three beautiful healthy kids yeah right you do have a successful business you have a great looking husband mm -hmm. yeah well, you know <laughs> you have a lot of stuff <laughs> to be thankful <laughs> for <laughs> He's my guy. He's my guy. That's why. He, he has a lot of yeah, man yeah, crushes. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. I'm like, Fa okay. Fa Fabian's my guy. He took he took care of me. So, um, it, it, it's an amazing story. The biggest thing is is getting it out there, sharing it. I love that you feel comfortable sharing it. Well, mm -hmm. What are some things that you want to leave for some people that do follow you and think that you have it all together? Before we end, what is something you want to leave your audience with? Um, definitely just to to keep moving i feel like we're all here for a purpose and for a reason and like in moments like how life just happened to me it's like we lose sight of that mm -hmm. and it's hard not to when life hits you down like when it puts you down when it takes you off of track um but 
to, to keep moving that we all have a good a, a main reason why we're here on this earth it's to connect people it's you know like you guys here on this podcast you're connecting people you're sharing people's stories you're helping people become relatable um you know and and be outlets for other people you know essentially like my story and so we're all here for a reason and just to keep going like you know keep going and to live your purpose you know and live your life and i think that's like the biggest the biggest lesson that i've taken that i would want other people to take too is you know just we don't know our reason and some people you know die and every you know people are like this person did this 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 and this for me and they left such an impact and that impact is i you know yeah exactly what we're you know essentially working for like if something were to happen to me i hope people remember me for a good you know a good reason um so yeah so just keep going and leave that impact here on earth and make you know essentially the world a better place as cliche as that means it's true true. i mean we said it a million times like you can't take all that stuff with you no no right you can't and 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 this year's specifically there's been i feel like a lot of death and i don't know if i'm just getting older and i'm realizing it more but it also makes me like really appreciative of what i have Mm -hmm. you know so i think for us we all are go 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 that we never take that step back to really be appreciative of what we have and Mm -hmm. i I think that was a great message um your locations west covina long beach and the new down location yes how do people find you they find you on the drip iv page yep so um our instagram we also have a website our instagram is at drip.iv and then our website um www.drip iv.com oh, drip, oh, with wow. drip with two p's drip with two p's don't forget P's. It. and the most famous one what's the what's the weight loss one that lipomino the lipomino Lipo, is the one that train Lipo oh my god you don't need it you're it'll change people's lives though because i know people that I, have I, gotten I, it i'm interested <laughs> i know people have gotten it yeah. all i heard people, was lipomino and i'm people love you got that me at gym. yeah they're like i lost 10 pounds I'm like, yeah stop no seriously uh, anyway thank it. you guys so much for tuning <laughs> in you. Uh, thank you Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you, Bring Vanessa, <laughs> for, for coming on here, sharing your story, you know, dropping knowledge to everyone here. But um, yeah, we love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. you. So Thank next you. time, you guys, peace.